The Grand Theft Auto series has been celebrated by video game fans, demonized by politicians, and even studied by academia. Today, the franchise is one of the most recognized video game brands on the market. Each of the last two games in the Grand Theft Auto series has sold millions, and the newest one, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, is poised to sell even more. The original Grand Theft Auto was released on the PC in early 1998. But even for those days, the game's top-down 2D graphics were pretty clunky looking. It was the game's irreverent style and open-ended gameplay design that made the game a cult hit among game players. GTA offered three different large cities to explore. Liberty City, Vice City, and San Andreas. As you start at each level, your character went to a payphone to pick up his first criminal mission. These missions would take you all over the city and varied from simple taxi jobs to assassinations and even car theft rings. A big part of the fun was exploring each city and finding the secret missions to do, or just causing general mayhem while eluding police and using weapons like machine guns, rocket launchers, and flamethrowers. The game eventually found its way onto the original Sony PlayStation, and an expansion pack called London 1969 plus a sequel, GTA 2, eventually were released. These additions to the franchise didn't change the gameplay all that much. It was Grand Theft Auto 3 that revolutionized the franchise, and many would argue, gaming in general. The most obvious difference between GTA 3 and the previous games in the series is the 3D engine, made possible by the PlayStation 2. Instead of having a detached, top-down view of the action, Grand Theft Auto 3 allowed you to explore a fully 3D world from a third-person perspective. This change brought you much closer to the action, giving the game a more personal feel, like you're watching an action movie. The use of celebrity voice actors like Michael Madsen and Kyle MacLachlan also added to the atmosphere. The open-ended gameplay design of the original games remained, allowing you to still explore a huge city, jack cars, shoot random people, and cause mayhem. But despite the fact that there's only one city in GTA 3, the opportunity for exploration was greater than in previous games. Another huge change is that the game designers included a main storyline, taking cues from popular crime films like Goodfellas and Heat. The way the story was integrated gave players a much better sense of purpose to every mission. Every time you delivered a package, knocked off an opposing crime boss, or tailed a snitch, you were helping your family get ahead in the mob wars. Whoa, hold up a sec. What? What? They did what? Right, right. Don't worry about it. I'm on it. Bob, ooh, nice gun. Hey, don't shoot me! Ah! Oh, oh, oh! Hey, that's my school, you jerk! Oh, I see that blade. You want some? You got some, some money. money? If you got money, you can get both, both of us, us, honey. Yeah, it's got a gun! It was the appeal of random violence like this that made Grand Theft Auto 3 such a hit, spawning tons of imitators in the market. But none of these really surpassed Grand Theft Auto until the next GTA in the series, Vice City. Mother Vice City didn't necessarily change the franchise that much like its predecessor, but arguably its signature feature is its dope soundtrack. Set in the 80s, you got artists like Michael Jackson, Herbie Hancock, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, and a slew of other things. And if you didn't want to listen to the soundtrack, you could just switch on the DJ commentary, which is pretty amusing. Set in a Miami-like setting, Vice City gave you an opportunity to not just jack cars, but also motorcycles, boats, and helicopters. And at the same time, in addition to the dope random acts of violence that you could pull, there was also missions that would allow you to buy businesses such as car dealerships, a nightclub that would all continuously make money for you. With its winning formula already established in GTA 3, 
Vice City just added more style and panache to a game that was already reeking a bolt. With the success of GTA 3 and Vice City, Rockstar North is once again poised to take the video game world by storm with the newest installment of Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. Yeah. GTA San Andreas took the series in an entirely different direction. Set in 1992 Los Santos, San Andreas is actually a state instead of one individual city. This time you get three different cities in all. Los Santos is the game's take on Los Angeles, San Fierro is San Francisco, and Las Venturas is Las Vegas. The story in San Andreas is much in the same way of uh, classic gang films like Men's to Society, Boys in the Hood. Basically, you're put in the role of Carl C.J. Johnson. Carl's been living out in Liberty City for five years trying to get away from the gangs, but his mother dies and he has to come home to bury her. That's where he hooks back up with his brother Sweet and his partners Ryder and Big Smoke. Those guys form the Grove Street Families. Now this gang used to be huge all over Los Santos, but since Carl's been gone, they've fallen into disrepair. So it's up to Carl to put the gang back together, find out who killed his mama, and set right what goes wrong. Hold on. Yeah. Nah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. All right, now, one. You know, probably one of the tightest things about San Andreas is the dialogue. The game is incredibly well written, the characters are all very well developed, and on top of that, the voice acting is top flight. You got people like MC8, you got James Woods, you got the game making a bit appearance, there's just tons of people throughout. All in all, it's a fantastic experience. Who knows where the series is gonna go from here, though? It's really anyone's guess. There's a lot of things that they could be doing. But I know what I gotta do. Get me some dinner. Peace.